Got it all right? Good, okay. All right, get your, your Bibles. <clears throat> you know, that's a wonderful thing to be able to say, get your Bible. You ever think about this, the one thing, I, I don't know if you've ever been in a service where they had four or five different Bibles, and they had everybody read the verse in their translation. You talk about the biggest convoluted mess you ever heard in your life. Amen. <laughs> We were trying to get a little, start a little church aboard the USS Eisenhower, and the chaplain said before we could use their space, we had to, you know, we had to go to their services. So we did. Oh, it was it was a disaster. And so, uh, thank God for you know, the common denominator in your life and my life is this book. Amen. The difference is is that we have a book that we can trust and that we 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 rest upon. Not upon men's ideas or thoughts or philosophy, but upon the very words of the living God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians. I've definitely been praying for Brother Bob, Pastor Bob, and for Brother Mark. And it just seems like it, it's a struggle. In this world, isn't it? If it ain't one, like the old black preacher say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't my house, it's your house. If it ain't your house, it's the White House. And <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one: For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Your your physical infirmities, your problems, one of these days are going to be fixed. Because I'm going to get me a new house. Amen. <laughs> and I don't have to paint it. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. For in this we groan, earnestly and desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat, to answer them with glory in appearance and not in heart. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for the honor of standing behind this pulpit and opening your book and, Lord, preaching what you put in the pages of this book. Pray that thy Holy Spirit might give, wor give unction to the words. And Lord, you might bless and fill this place with your presence. We do pray for Brother Mark at this time, at this time and you'd heal him up. Pray for Pastor Bob. Lord, and others, the Clark family, Lord God, Miss Miss Betty, God, uh, just touch their bodies. We, we, we enjoy their fellowship so much. We, we miss them when they're not here. And I pray, Lord, that you might raise them up, and we'll thank you and pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. You have a seat. Um, Paul was looking to encourage the folks at Corinth and to remind them of some things. It isn't all down here. And that's and it's kind of hard sometimes to to forget, to get a hold of. Uh, boy, when, when you you can't work a forty or fifty hour job hour job a week, and not focus on things down here. Amen, amen. That's one of the purposes of the meetings we have. Why we have why we have Sunday morning. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, why we have Wednesday evening prayer meeting, why we have special meeting, why is that? Because if, if you're not careful, we need, we, you, you, you drift, amen? The cares of this world just gets to the point where they just kind of grab a hold of your mind and get you focused on things. I'm bad about it. I can think about one thing at a time, amen? 
So my, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I got to do this. I got, I got to fix that. I got, you know, I'm, I'm working on those things, and it, it gets hard. It really is hard sometimes. So um, Paul's talking about laboring in verse nine. He's talking about we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and everyone may receive the things done in his body. In his body, that's important to understand. You don't have to give account for anybody else besides you. Amen. Amen. That's. They have these things now. I, I, I don't know where it started or who started it, but the Karens. If you say, and it's like, it's like, how can these The problem is everybody's worried about everybody else and how it, you know, how it affects me. I mean, I, I saw some, you know, the, here's some folks, and, and the, it's the neighbor, and she's gone in sideways, and she, and she doesn't like the people have, they're having a cookout with babies and kids. So they're spray, she's spraying this water. You know, from the hose. It's like, what's wrong with you? It's like, well, it just bothered her that they're having a good time. People are nuts. And so, so, so if you plug into this world after a while, it's just going to drive you crazy. So you got to remember some things. That you're laboring for someone. Amen. And the Lord, the Lord has taken our hands and our feet and our heart and our, and our tongue and using them for His glory. And that's when, when you do that, when you say, all right, Lord, I'm going to be your, your tool today, that's called laboring for Him. And verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in His body according to that He hath done, whether it be good or bad. That's kind of a scary verse. Because that means that, that if, if, if you do right, the Lord's going to note it. Amen? He's written her down. And if you do wrong as a child of God, God's writing it down. Brother, and that's the reason why you don't have to get bent out of shape about somebody. If somebody does something you don't like, to do, don't like, okay, pray for them. Amen. And if, and if they're wrong, and they, they may very well be, God will straighten them out one day. And if not, He might straighten you out. Amen. So, all right, so, so if you would turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now, for time's sake, we're just going to do one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Look in verse 25. Now, we, we better start in 24 and read in 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. That's the hard part of the Christian life, being temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, that by the uh, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Every man is striving for this mastery, is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Just a few minutes on some crowns. The next event on God's calendar is the rapture. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. I've been I've been listening to Doc as as I work around the house, and uh, he he. If you've never heard his uh, I, I think I need to put together a Sunday school lesson. You've never heard the, the teaching on Israel, the history of Israel. It's fascinating. Because what you see is how God put this book. Now, this is, like I said, this, and he says it many times, this book is not, is not a religious book. It's a history book. The problem is, is whenever, if this is a history book, then God keeps showing up in it. And therefore, if God shows up in it and it's a history book, the things that he said, like in the Ten Commandments, are going to be required of men. In other words, you're going to stand before God, and God's going to judge you. Now, the child of God, you've already had your sin taken care of, amen? Amen. Uh, uh, because, of, because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we are free, free, free from the, sin, the, the consequences of our sin. Amen. But there is still going to be a judgment. People have this idea, well, you know, I'm going to go to heaven, and I'm going to sit up on a cloud, and, you know, they get that, I get that, they get that from the Bugs Bunny cartoon, I think, I, you know, where, I don't know where it comes from. 
First Peter chapter 1, verse 4 says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. God's got something prepared for you, brother. Amen. God's got, listen, God, God is not unfaithful. And God is not, not he's, he's wise and He's good. And he, what He's going to do is he, he will not be a debtor to any man. So if, you're gonna, if you work for Him, He's going to make sure you get a nice payday. Amen. Now, we, we, we talk about this judgment seat of Christ. When is it? Where is it? What's going on with it? All right. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, look in verse 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart and then shall every man have praise of God. The time is when he comes. That's, that's, that's the judgment seat of Christ. What's the place? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Where is this going to happen? Well, the rapture is the first part of the, of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the place that we're going to have this judgment is 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians 4, 7, Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You're going to meet the Lord in the air. That's, that's, that, that's the place. It's in the air. Now, this is not a trial. This is not a judgment to find if you're innocent or guilty. Amen? Do you know what you said to God when you got saved? Well, I don't know about you, but when I, but me, when I came, when, when I got saved for the first time, I realized it was my sin that Jesus Christ died for. Amen. That's there's a there's a great. I before that I thought, well, you know, he yeah, he died for sin, but you know that's Charles Manson, that's you know murderers and bad people and drug addicts and you know that, but not me. I was I was a good kid. Amen. You know, the only one time I back mouthed my mom, my dad almost killed me. <laughs> Amen. He grabbed hold of me, a little short, sawed off Scott, and he, he said, Son, you don't ever talk to your mom like that. Yes, sir. Top of the I, I made the mistake of doing it at the top of the stairs. And, he, you know, Amen. But I was, besides that, I was a good kid. My brother got in all the trouble. I was, I was the dummy. I, I, you know, I, I just sat back and smiled and watched him get in trouble. Amen. That's smart. But, uh, but, but the, the, the judgment seat of Christ is not going to be a matter of where God's going to judge. Judge whether you're righteous or unrighteous, that's always already been determined. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new cre- he is a new creature. That's a statement of truth. Now th- there should be, we, we and, and preachers use that to say, you know, there should be a change in life, and there, there should be. But folks, I got news for you. If you get saved and trust Jesus Christ, your Savior, and you're born again, and you go out and live a, a, a wicked life, and God kills you quick, which he might. Are you still saved? Yeah. Was there any fruit in that life? No. And at the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to be saved, the Bible says, yet so as by fire. He's going to make it in, no rewards. Amen. There's nothing, nothing coming from, from a life lived for self. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So it's not a trial to judge innocence or guilty. It's, it's has, it has to do with an inheritance. Now, your inheritance is earned, and you get some things. Turn to, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look in verse 11. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, Wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, shown. For the day shall, will, shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built, you know these things, therefore uh, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that uh, ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? All right, so this... this Judgment seat of Christ has to do with uh, rewards or loss. Um, I don't know. 
there's all kinds of illustrations about it. The one I've always thought in my mind is, is the Lord's going to take all of the things that you do and, and he's going to ask you about them and, 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 and you know, it's like you, you take them in your hand, you, you place them before the altar and, and the fire falls. I don't know if that's exactly how it's going to work, but the wood, hay, and stubble burns up and the gold, silver, and precious stone, which, which, are, which are, 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 are intrinsic value, they stay. Now, what is wood? That's a dead tree. Amen. What's hay? That's, that's, that's dead oats. What's stubble? That's what's left after you cut the whole field out. Amen. So, so, so there's, when you do things for yourself, amen, and you, get, you, you, you glorify self, then there's nothing for it. Now, that, that brings up a, a question. So here's this preacher, and he has this great big work. And everybody pats him on the back and tells him how wonderful, you know, he's just, he is just so, you are just, you are the wonderful, you know. And, and there's a bunch of them out there. Well, if, if everything they're doing is so they can get a claim, then you know what happens at the judgment seat of Christ? No reward. And here's a, li- here's a little old Sunday school teacher, amen, that, that sacrifices and supports missions and, 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 and you know, bakes cookies and does everything for their class and, you know, visits them kids and takes time with them and loves them and teaches them about the Lord Jesus Christ and leads them to Christ, amen? And at the judgment seat of Christ, everybody says, well, she ain't going to have much, and they put it down there, and boy, there's a pile. Amen, brother. You see, you see uh, the important words is, is when, he, when he talks about, about the, the, the rewards, it has to do with, with what sort it is. Why did you do what you do? And that's, that's and, and getting self out of, the, out of it, it's just about impossible. It really is hard. But anyway, if, you di- if, if deeds that are done for self are bad, that's wood, hay, stubble. Deeds, the, 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 the good works that you do, that's gold, silver, precious stone. We talk about gold, that's deity. When you glorify God, as, uh, uh, he gets, you get gold. Silver is the price of Redemption, when you talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and you give out a gospel track, what are you doing? You're sowing silver. Amen. Silver, gold, silver, and precious stone. What are precious stones? The Bible likes them to someone who gets saved. So Brother Bob got him a new, a new stone in his crown. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, in the Greek games, all this, all this analogy that, that Paul uses came from the Greek games from 776 B.C. until 393 uh, A.D. quite a quite a span, and those those contestants. You know, there's there's all kinds of uh, the the games that they did back then were not the same as they do today. And, you know they didn't have bicycles and bike, bicycling and triathlon and all that. Kind of, but they they had all these competitions. And when someone won a competition, he was crowned with a with a just a just a, a wreath of of flowers or or leaves of some sort. And they would, you know, that thing you think about it, how long would it last? Well, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. It reminds me of, of uh, when Rex and Buddy Cargill and three or four other guys went preaching somewhere and all the wives stayed there in, in Brian's Road at Brother Buddy's house. And they were coming back and they stopped at a food line or, or a Safeway or someplace to get some, get some snacks and stuff for the road. And they're all getting, they're all getting in line, and Rex, is, Rex has these flowers. And, he, and, and Buddy looks at Rex and says, Rex, what are you doing them flowers? Well, I'm taking them to my wife. Said, Harrison, you can't take that. You can't do that. And Buddy said, and Rex said, well, why, why is that? Because if you take flowers to your wife, we've got to get flowers for our wives. <laughs> so the story is that Rex, they all got flowers. And so, so Rex came back a few weeks later, and here's the vase sitting in the middle of the kitchen table, and all these dead flowers. <laughs> and Rex, said, Rex looked at Miss Cargill, and she said, Miss Cargill, what's with the flowers? She said, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. <laughs> That's it, amen. They're, those crowns don't mean anything. But can you imagine, can you imagine the judgment seat of Christ? The fires fall. There's some gold. There's some silver. Precious stones, and and the Lord takes them up and puts them in a crown. 
Now, you, reason, you, know, you know the reason why he, we're going to have a crown, right? So you can throw it at his feet. I like, I like that thought. And he picks that crown up and places it. You know, you look up and there's scars in the hands here. Amen. Why is it, why is it, gonna, why is it important? Why is it good? Why is it wonderful? Because of the person who's going to do it. You know, there's politicians. Who, I mean, what if they were to bestow some kind of a medal? Who cares? But boy, to have the Savior who suffered for me. Amen. Who, who listen, he, he left glory. He left, he left the, 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 the acclaim of the cherubim and the seraphim. He, he stepped down from the throne of glory and, and humbled, the Bible says, humbled himself and became a man and walked among men. He got dirty feet. Amen. He got tired. He got, just like you and I did do, lived a sinless life, died a sacrificial death. That's him. That's him. And, and to have him take a crown and Place it upon your head and say, well done, thou good and faithful. Man, you talk about shout him out. Of course, I, you, you won't shout in front of him it'll, it'll, except to say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. But anyway, um, we're talking about crowns. I'm trying to get this thing done. Well, there's a couple of crowns. And you probably, if you've been saved very long, you've heard this preach. There's, there's one or two points I wanted to hit in here on. If, uh, turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1 about these crowns. There are some crowns that you can win. There are some crowns that, that, that only certain people can have. But James chapter 1, look in verse 12, everybody can get this crown. James chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, that means that the, the temptations that, that come your way are a trial to see if you'll do right when you could do wrong. Amen. Now, if you've been saved very long, you know what you find? There is a conflict. That's one of the ways you know you're saved. Why is that? Because before I got saved, there was no conflict. Let's, you know, let's, let's go out and get... Let's, let's live the life of a sailor. Yeah! <laughs> hey, I, got, I, got, I got $200 for payday. Let's go. Where's the money at? Oh, who knows? It's gone. Amen. Amen. But now, I got, now I'm saved. You know, a temptation. Something comes up. Boy, there's a fight. That old man says, man, that would be fun. The new man says, no. I like Bible reading and prayer. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so that's, that's, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So in other words, when you give in to your, to your temptations, the trial of your life, and you say yes to yourself and low to him, what does he say, what does he say about that? He said, if, if, you, if, you, if you stand strong, that you show that you love him and his word more than you love yourself. That's hard. But that comes, what happens is, is it's just like a, it's just like a uh, you know, like a body. If, if you're lifting weights, you don't start, you know, you don't start uh, bench lifting 240 pounds. Amen. It's about, it, it's 10 pounds. <laughs> Amen. And then it's 20, and then it's 30, and then it's 40, and then it's 30, and then it's 40. <laughs> Amen. That's the way it works. You don't st so you got to grow with it. And what will happen, what you're going to find is you, as you, as you submit yourself to this book, that's why it's important to read a proverb a day. That's why it's important to read three pages of your Bible every day. Amen. Why is that? Because most, most Christians, when they close, you know, they, 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 keep, they bring their King James Bible to church. Praise God, I'm King James. Amen, you're supposed to be. But then what happens during the rest of the week? And that, then we become weak. <laughs> Why is that? Because I'm not in the book. I'm not spending, there's, there's no ammunition in, 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 the, in the, the, the uh, clip when you put it in, you know. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just empty. 
And that's the reason why, that's what reason why you fall, you fail. Because you're tried. You're tried. And that this this matches 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. I, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And that's the same thing. And we don't have time to go into that tonight. I'm on, I need to get done. In Matthew chapter 4, the Lord Jesus Christ is tempted in, in all points as you are. Amen. He's tempted by, the, there's the lust of the flesh in Matthew 4, 4. There's the lust of the eyes in Matthew 4, 9. There's the pride of life in Matthew 4, 6. Those same things that you, and I, that you go through, the Lord was tempted in the same way. And his trial showed no failure. Amen. Um, so there's a crown for you when you endure temptation. Can I, I, I'm going to skip something. I'm going to say this. Do you know what the greatest temptation today is? The greatest temptation you're going to, is going to be to quit. Do you know why, you know why the, church, the churches aren't filled anymore? Christians get mad. Amen. They get bitter. I'm, I, I, I've had it. I don't, you know, I love the Lord, but I'm not going back to church. Amen. Sure does make church kind of hard <laughs> sometimes. Amen. Hebrews 10, 24. Turn to Hebrews 10. Just a few pages over. I would remind you that this is God's book and God's word. These are not my words. I'll be honest with you. It, it, it would be easy for me to stay home. Amen. You say, oh, you're a preacher. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like the, the guy and his wife talking one morning, one, you know, one Sunday morning, said, I ain't going to go in. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm so discouraged. The people, they're just mad at me. I, they don't want nothing to do with me. I, and nobody likes me. And, you know, honey, I'm just not, I'm just going to stay home. She, she says, you can't stay home. So why can't I stay home? You're the preacher. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, look down at verse 15. Hebrews 4. For we have not an high priest... I like, I like the double negatives of the King James Bible. Amen. Makes you think. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. So our priest knows the infirmities you have. He was tempted like as you are yet without sin. Our greatest temptation is to quit. Hebrews, I'm sorry, I should, it should have been Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10, 24. Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. You know what, one of, the, one of the jobs, one of the purposes of you being here today, tonight, is to provoke somebody. Amen. And you're, you're, being, you're being faithful and being in, being in service, that, 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 it should, some folks need to be shamed by that. And don't get me wrong, I understand work, I understand all the things that come in the way sometimes, but sometimes isn't it just, you know, well, I just don't feel like going tonight. Well, what do you say? <laughs> what do you say? Verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke, to pro provoke one another, unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, is the day approaching? Amen. So, so we need to, amen, e e exhort. One, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I like those words in the Bible, but they're there, amen. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men. Be strong. Be strong. I think the Lord would be pleased with his children that desire to be there when the doors are open. And, and this is Wednesday night crowd. I, this, this is just, a, I mean, y'all travel what, 60 miles to come to church? Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, there's an old violin maker years ago. 
He was envied by all the violin makers. His violins, they had, they had superior sound. And, and, and the, the, the sustain, the sound would fill a room and, and bounce off the walls. And they just didn't understand how he could make his violin. They would look at, how he, at his violins. They didn't see anything different in the structure. They would, they would, they would you know, try to discern, was he, putting, was he putting something extra inside? Nothing inside. It was just the same as theirs. So they began to ask, and finally he, dis- he disclosed a secret. He said this, th- this old violin maker, he said, most violin makers make wood, make their violins out of wood from protected valleys. It's easy to get to the wood. He says, I climb to the highest mountains. I, f- I, 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 I look out and I find these trees that are twisted and tested by the storm. These fierce trials of these storms toughen the fibers of the wood. And so when I cut them down and bring bring that wood down and begin to shape it, uh, the the violins have a a deeper uh, uh, sound, they have a more majestic sound that fills the room. Why is it? Because they came from the hardest place. And you may be going through some rough times, and like Miss Betty and amen. What's happening? Well, the, the, the trees are being <laughs> blown by the winds. Amen, Brother Mark. Amen, they're being tried. What's happening? God's working on testing some folks and building some folks up. And that's not the time to quit going to church. So we get a crown of life if we endure temptation. Then there's a crown of glory. After the preachers, I'm not going to say much about that. I'm going to say this. Um, you find it in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2, 3, and 4. And the need that has to be met to, to fulfill that is to feed the flock. And I don't have time to, to say anything, but I, I wanted to say this one point. You know, uh, God created Adam and Eve. He did not create Adam and Steve. Amen. Amen. And, and I borrowed that. It's not mine. <laughs> I'm not really. There's a special entity called a family. And God, in the, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then when he, when he got to the point where he needed to make someone to fellowship with, he made a man. That man was lonely. So God said, I'm, you know, go to sleep, Adam. And out of Adam's side, he pulled a rib, and he made a woman. And helped. Meet for him. Ladies, do you know why you're not like your husband? Because you're better. Amen. He's from the dirt. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. So, of course, now I, I, I was, I, uh, Melissa was out at the barn and I, and I was getting some things uh, taking, and taking some chains back and different things that, where I've been working. And uh, here's Logan and Montgomery <laughs> and the the spigot was running. All, <laughs> so there's this, all this mud, and they were right in the middle of it, boy, and it was head to toe. Amen? That's boys. We're, we are the dirt. We don't mind getting dirty, amen? But ladies, <laughs> I, I said that to say this. If you're a man and you're a husband, are you not the pastor of your home? Uh, I pastored Highland Hills Baptist Church about seven years, and then we, we started deputation. First little bit, I, first, well, first two years, I, I, drove, I, I, I ran the roads myself in, in a 80, 1984, was it 84? 1984 uh, Chevy Astro van, and I pulled a little 11-foot trailer. And, and I, I was praying for two years, Lord, give me, I need something I can take my family. I wanted, I wanted God, I wanted Vicky and the kids to see God doing what he, I'd seen him do. Amen. And so, long story short, the Lord gave, gave us a, a motor home, fixed it all up, and we left in 1996 uh, to run the roads as a family. I, can I say this? The most precious times I've had as a dad has been in that camper 
Amen. Six of us in a 27-footer. <laughs> Amen. One bathroom. <laughs> but folks, it taught me how important it is to be the pastor of my home. Now, I don't claim I'm, I haven't achieved, but there's a thought that I think has been missed in our, you know, romp and stomp and King James Bible. God gave you that woman. He gave you, you know, if you got, if you got a good woman, you got a jewel. Amen. You knucklehead. You smack her and you're going to, amen. You smack, we hear about somebody smacking a woman in this church. We'll get Brother Mark. He'll come up. We'll take her ball. Amen. Amen. I'll thump you. I'll thump you. <laughs> But, the, but there's, the pastor gets a crown like that, and I don't know, I don't think there's a crown, for, but boy, there might be. What if there were? Pastor of your home. There's a need to be met, feed the flock. There's a motive of the heart, is, is not constraint, it's willingly. There's a passion of purpose, not for filthy lucre, but, but a calling. Amen. You got a wife? That's a holy calling to be a husband. Amen. To be the pastor of your home. I'm talking about some crowns. Then we, of course, now we got the, uh, the crown of rejoicing. That's a soul winner's crown. That's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. The hope there is to meet in heaven. The joy is a rejoice and a complete salvation. The crown is the trophies of grace. That's, that's William Booth was a, he was a character, and he started the Salvation Army in England. And for 30 years, 30 years, he would take his troops out, and they would go on the streets of London and preach on the streets, and they'd have a band, they'd strike up a band, and, I mean, they had tomatoes thrown at them, they had bricks thrown at them, they, you know, they, you talk about trouble. So finally, 30 years, King Edward the, the Seventh invited uh, William Booth to Buckingham Palace in 1904. And he looked at him, and, he, and, and of course, now this is the king. And, and William Booth, you know, of course, he was ushered in. He came in, they, they, they talked. And King Edward VII said, you are doing a good work, Mr. Booth. You're doing a great work, General Booth. And, and they had an autograph book that, that everyone who came before the king signed and, and, and put a little, a little statement. And he's at this time, at this at this point, Booth is 75 years old. And he wrote this. He says, Your Majesty, some men, some men's ambition is art, some men's ambition is fame, some men, men's ambition is gold. My, my ambition is the souls of men. I got saved December 15, 1977. And I'm I'm not <clears throat> I have a hard time sometimes breaking the ice. But I worked with a guy named Gene Dowdney. Gene Dowdney was a second-class aviation machinist mate. I was a, a third class. And when the jet engines ran on the test cell, he would be inside running, running the controls, and I would go outside and adjust the, the fuel controls and, and trim things up, make sure everything like it's supposed, supposed to be, right? And so Gene and I got along pretty good. We, you know, we, were, we, were, it, we didn't run around. We weren't, but... We talked, and we talked, and I gave him a couple gospel tracts, and we talked, amen. And I remember there came a day, he came to me, he says, hey, can I talk to you? I said, well, sure. So he, we went in the test cell, into, the, in, into the, the booth where the controls were at, and Gene asked me, he says, what do I have to do to get saved? The first one, Gene, Gene Dowd. So, so how did you do that? The Lord did it. Amen. But boy, I'll tell you what. Crown of rejoicing. Crown of rejoicing. One of these days. There's a crown of righteousness in 2 Timothy 4.8 for those that love his appearing. Now, we don't have time for all this. We need to go home. But you, you, get, this, you get this crown if you watch in all things in verse 5. If your wakefulness, what does that mean? Well, that's the action of being fully awake. You need to be aware of what's going around, folks. Amen. Amen. You need to see, see it and pray. Amen. You need to pray for 
the peace of Jerusalem. Of the times at hand, there's a remembrance. And I like this at the end of verse, the end of verse 6. Henceforth, from now on, this time forward, henceforth, there's a crown laid up for me, a crown of righteousness. So why do you preach about the Lord coming back? Why do you encourage us? Because He's coming back. And I want you to see the thing is when, when you realize that He's coming back and it could be at any moment, it helps. Amen. Amen. It helps it helps it helps you to defeat yourself sometimes. Crown of righteousness. We talked a little bit about that, about that crowning day. That'll be a day. That'll be a day. Then there's an incorruptible crown. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. We read those earlier. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. What's Paul fearful about? Look in verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. I like, I like Manny Pacquiao. He's a, he's a Filipino boxer. He's... he's uh, he ran for president last term, and he's a, he was a senator for one or two terms. And uh, if you ever watch, if you ever, if you ever want to see some really good boxing, he's the guy to watch because right? tougher, tough as nails. Amen. They had what did they call it? They they had a thing. Now he's he's. I understand he's supposed to have gotten saved. I, I don't know, but but he he definitely is. He definitely is wanting to see some righteousness in his country. Some of the corrupt, you know, you think, we, 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 <laughs> it's been evident here lately that, that our government's just as corrupt as anybody else, which is because human man's nature is corrupt. But over there in, in the third world, it's evident all the time. You, you see it everywhere. It's, everything's falling apart because nothing, everything, everybody gets their 10%. So pretty soon there's nothing there. But Paul was fearful of some things that, that he would run not uncertainly. You need to know where you're going. To fight, focus, know who to hit, and to keep a good testimony, know how to behave. You do those three things, you'll have an incorruptible crown. 1 John 2, 8, 28 says this, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have this confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his, com at his coming. There's some crowns. Crown of life to endure temptation. Crown of glory to feed the flock crown of rejoicing to be a soul winner, crown of righteousness to love his appearing, and an incorruptible crown to yield not to temptation. If he came back tonight, would you have a crown? If not, there's time. There's time. Father, thank you for the promises you put in this book. Lord, thank you for showing us your dealings with men and mankind and nations. And Lord, thank you for your showing us your dealing with individuals during the church. I pray for our folks here. I pray that you'd encourage them and help them. I pray, Lord, that, that, that we don't want to get crowns for ourselves, Lord. We just want to be found faithful. I think that's really what it comes down to, Lord. If we'll just be faithful in the things that you, you ask us to do, if we'll try to labor and to do right, no matter what, Lord, that you'll be pleased with it when, when we see you. And I pray, Lord, that you'd, you'd bless all the ministries of Anchor. Lord, pray for the Sunday school teachers and the Sunday school. Thank you so much for the, the Wednesday night, Lord, the, with, the young, with the young people. Lord, put in their hearts something that will help them to be able to stand in this evil day and having done all to stand. I pray, Lord, that you do a work. You, you'd encourage Pastor Bob. And, Lord, take care of the tape ministry and the books and the, all the things that you, that you have here, the tracks, Lord, use them to glorify yourself and your name. I pray, Lord, that you'd encourage your children, strengthen us in thee, Lord God. I pray that this week we go out with a spring in our step, an encouragement in our heart, knowing that, Lord, you see everything and you're writing her down. And, Lord God, we're laboring not for ourselves but for thee. And I pray, Lord, you might be found, help us to be found faithful in, in those things that you want us to do. I do pray, Lord, that you'd raise up our pastor and encourage him Pray that you take care of Brother Ben and the Clarks. God, you'd uh, just give strength to Brother Mark and them. And we'll thank you, Father, and pray it in Jesus' name for his sake.